What's up, y'all? So Cannon came out swinging on Mother Light. You know, they, they really came out in full force showing people why they are the, you know what I'm saying, the number one camera company to beat right now. Like, they came out and show like, they did an Apple, you know what I mean? Like, you know, when Apple come out, they do something real grand and real extra extravagant, it's usually known and talked about. So with Cannon coming out dropping his hammer, they still got a little cripple hammer right now, but with Cannon coming out dropping his hammer on people, I'm gonna be real with y'all. I think Panasonic is dead. But let me tell you why. Yo, what's going on, everybody? My name is Sean Brooks. I'm a filmmaker based right here in Chicago. I talk about a lot of camera stuff, teach you some camera stuff. So if that sounds like something that interests you, man, make sure you sub to the channel, like and comment if you can. Then you can follow me at Brooks Media everywhere on all my social media. Like, look, legit, Brooks Media is my social media. But welcome back to another episode of What The Frame. If you're not familiar with What The Frame, What The Frame, we discuss camera tech, camera rumors, anything camera news related, that's what we discuss on this series here. So with Canon being the talk of the morning, well, talk of the yesterday, rather, let's talk about Canon. So. You guys didn't know Canon dropped the R5 and R6. So just so we could brush past all the stuff that you can read on your own, the Canon R5 out the gate, $38.99. You get 4K 128K raw, 45 megapixel sensor, dual pixel autofocus 2, as they call it. 10-bit <laughs> 422 in turn. I mean like crazy bit race, 2600. I mean like you name it, this camera got it. Then we move on to R6. They got 4K 60 at 10-bit and you got like slight crop. I got a flip screen. Bitrate's kind of trash though, but you know, that's neither here nor there. But here's the thing, listen, and I know that you guys are wondering like, what do I mean that this is probably like, honestly, it could be a death of Panasonic, man. So if we take a look at the R5 versus the S1H. Now granted, the S1H has a, like, a lot more video capabilities to do, and then with the Ninja V, you could do ProRes RAW. But with the Canon R5, you're able to get 8K RAW internally and 422 10-bit, internally you know what I'm saying now you can't get that with the, the s1h but you only get up to 6k and that's again that's not raw i don't even think that's all intro i think that's long got so i'm saying all that to say this the canon r5 is actually cheaper than the s1h has usable autofocus has 8k doesn't have this big old stupid fan has a 45 megapixel sensor i mean like Again, you know, the autofocus stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the that's a big thing. But my boy Level of Tech pointed out something to me that was very, very important, which I did not consider when I even came up with this talking point, which is that, yes, the Canon R5 is great for the price point and what you could do with it, and yes, the autofocus is great, but if you're a filmmaker who don't need autofocus, then the S1H may still be your bread and butter. And the reason I'm saying that is because you get unlimited recording. On the R5, we've already seen a couple of overheating issues with this camera out the gate, which is pretty concerning. But we've already seen some overheating issues with this camera, and then you don't have that with the S1H because they have the fan in there. And that's where the R5 kind of dropped the ball. They should have put an internal fan in this camera, knowing how extensive and how hungry these bit rates are gonna be. They should have kind of thought that out a little bit more if I had to be honest. In, rich, in regards to the S1H, now you have a Netflix-approved camera, you get ProRes RAW, you get unlimited recording. Now it's time to the 10, if you're using this on Netflix production, you're sitting here, you have a focus puller, so autofocus really doesn't matter. And then on top of that, if a pen Sonic really want to come out and fight out that grave hole if they make that S1H like 3,000 even 3,500 I don't know man that you know may not be the death of Panasonic but in all fairness though Panasonic listen B for Panasonic to stay alive in this game and to be like still the top dog one the GH6 got to be something done just very similar to what they did with the GH5 to this day, I can argue that my GH5 can still bang with a lot of these 2020 cameras, and I really have no real reason to upgrade. And especially in comparison to something like the Canon R6, technically my camera has like a lot of higher bit rates than what the Canon R6 currently offers now, and my camera is cheaper. Granted, the R6 is full frame, but whatever. Panasonic, you have to get rid of, you gotta get rid of contrast phase detection. You get, leave DFD alone, phase detect, it will save you. Think about this right now, and, and and like really, really think about this for real, for real. If the Panasonic GH5 had phase detect autofocus, everybody and a mama would own this camera. I'm talking about people who don't even shoot for real. If the Panasonic GH5 had phase detect autofocus, it would shut the game down. If the S1H had phase detect autofocus, 
the R5 wouldn't even be, I mean, to me, I wouldn't even be looking at the R5 to be real. Like, that's the only thing that's really holding Panasonic back, and it will be the death of them if they do not listen to the consumers. The R5 and the R6, to me, is like a benchmark they kind of set. Like, Canon came out and said, like, we just gonna call it what it is, bro. We just gonna call it what it is. Canon came out and put their dick on the table. They said, if you wanna roll with the big boys, this is how low we hanging, what you gonna do? And right now the ball is in Sony and Panasonic's court, but I'm really talking more so to Panasonic. Sony, you got a whole nother video coming out for what you did with that lens. Three, $3,000, bro? $3,000 for a lens that you would have two other variations of? Okay, anyway, listen, Panasonic, you get rid of DFD. If you get rid of that, R5 is obsolete in my opinion. So with the R6, okay, probably not obsolete, but you have more of a fighting chance than what you do right now. It should not be that hard for me to make a decision on a camera that who's, I mean, honestly, if you think about it, Panasonic got the best tilt screen because it actually tilts up in different ways, not just flip out. Um, they got the best video codecs. Honestly, I still think Panasonic has one of the best minion systems out there when it comes to touch control, best LCD, zebras. I mean, if you think about everything that this Panasonic S1H has, it has everything. So does the GH5. The only thing it really don't have is phase attack autofocus. And that's, I just, I, I just don't get why you would not put that in your camera after you know how bad DFD is. I mean, listen, who am I, Panasonic? I'm just the owner of your camera. All I'm saying is R5 has put a lot of pressure on people. If you really think about it, let's be real right now. Let's just talk about the Canon R5. The Canon R5 has made an, uh, a stumping ground in, in the camera world to itself. Like honestly, if you bought the Canon R5 right now, you really won't have to buy another camera for at least 10 years. That's how far ahead the Canon R5 is. And to be real, that's kind of how far ahead the GH5 was when it came out in 2017. Like to be real, I really don't need to buy another camera until like 2022, something like that when something else was like, the, it's just, you know, obviously there are like a lot more better stuff out there. But right now, my camera does 422 10-bit internally. Great codecs, 400 megabits per second all intro, 4K, 6K, DCI 4K. Like, if you'd have just gave me fake, like, I'm gonna be real with you, Panasonic, if you'd gave me fake, just like I wouldn't be looking at another camera. But the R5 has, like, it, made, it gave itself 8K, CF Express, UHS-2 uh, SD card slot, 45 megapixel sensor, crazy uh, eight, eight stops of IBIS. I don't know what the low light looking like yet, but you know, that's still up to be in the uh, discussion. But it's just Panasonic, with the especially with the death of Olympus, the fall of Olympus, right now is your time to shine, baby, and to respond. So I need you to respond correctly. Don't just come out responding, respond correctly. That's all I got to say. So it may not be the death of Panasonic, but I'm, but, but I'm curious to know what you guys think. Like right now with the Canon R5 coming out and with this crazy autofocus, do you really think that Panasonic like is dead in the water if they don't come out? with phase detect autofocus? Or do you think they still have a fighting chance for videographers who really don't care about autofocus, they just really want those great video specs with the limited recording and no overheating issues? I'm really curious to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And we out.